Well, hello everybody. It's me, Rob Racer 97 <laughs> And uh, MB Foley, also known as Matt. Perfect timing. Yeah, we're going to make a uh, Hotline Miami level letter tutorial for you, because there's none in video form. It's a whole bunch of written ones, but who wants to read? Fuck that. So, yeah, as Rob says, that there's multiple guys on the Steam Workshop with um, level editor, but also with spriting. And we just felt that, again, it would just be easier to make, obviously, a video series for this because, again, like he said, he wants to read, but also it's just so much material that we want to cover, and this is, like, the most efficient way to do so. So, yeah, let's get started. Yeah, in this level, or episode, we are just covering the basics. I remember when I first opened the editor, it really intimidated me. So you're going to watch me make a basic level, and it'll make all sense to you, and we can stop getting those shitty levels with one type of carpet and a bunch of random enemies walking around an empty room. How about that? Awesome. Yeah, and also the, the menu music that's like not selected, but um, the first thing you want to do is... Tab. Uh, well, yeah, all yeah, you so fuckers we're... that keep asking me how to access cap campaigns, you go to this, you enter the uh, editor, tab. Really Boom. All right, now these are all the ones that you've downloaded. You hit escape, you hit A, now you've got campaigns. You want to explain um, local uploads and downloads in the top right? Yeah, so local is the ones that are on your uh, hard drive. It's the ones that you create or the ones you, you put in the folder. Uploads are the ones that you create and you've uploaded, obviously, and downloads is the important one for when you hit subscribe in the workshop, this is what's going to come up. All those great campaigns. So, to make a level, you want to first hit C to create, yes, and you'll get uh, a menu looking like this. And it gives you a whole bunch of options. First, you want to title it something. What do you want to call it this level, Matt? Um, let's just do Editor 1. Editor 1. Oh, no. Nothing fancy. And let's play as Hammer, because everyone loves the level editor cinnamon bun. And then you also, here, you can choose your song, and all of them, it's pretty much every song from the main game. We are going mm -hmm. to choose the fan favorite, Sexualizer. Hit OK. Oh, uh, before we leave, uh, here's the available enemies. Not every character can fight every enemy, so if you want to fight the uh, police, you can't play Evan. And if you want to play the soldier, you can only fight other soldiers. There's a way around this that we'll cover in a later video. Because yeah. right now it's the basics. Mm -hmm. As we uh, kind of go throughout the video series, we'll soon get to we talk about spriting and the wiki where restricted character enemies are not going to be a common issue. But for now, we're just going to focus on what's available to us as a default. All right. And hammer is the best choice because, as you see, they're all highlighted except for soldiers. But you can get soldiers through a glitch that we'll show you probably another episode. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, you're going to have the five tabs right here. Level, build, items, misc, and enemy. Yeah, I did not say those in order. <laughs> but uh, to do anything, you're going to have to pl uh, place your player and the vehicle down. You just click on it and you can set it down. And if you want to move it, you're going to have to click it again and hold down the right mouse button, erase it, and place it. And mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, the door will show up once you actually play. And if you're playing a character, say like the fans, where there's more than one character, there'll be little arrows right here to swap through. It's not that difficult. So the first thing, and once you get good at the editor, um, you can do this in any order you want, but we're just gonna go in order through here. Mm -hmm. And so build, build is the walls and the floors mostly, as well as doors and windows. So let's choose just our little uh, basic white walls and click to drag them. And to so right now we have them vertically. You can get them horizontally by clicking this or the much faster way, hold down shift and hit right, right mouse button. Yeah, they, definitely. Yeah, hotkeys are definitely going to save you a lot of time when you're doing this instead of, again, like you're doing like manually going through. But um, mm -hmm. like you said, with the hold shift, click right, it's at the bottom very bottom of the command keys of this uh, build tab. Um, and I think as we go further, there's ones when you're accessing your level, like playing, which you do control P, which surprisingly I did not know about till like eight months in. 
But um, again, it just saves you a boatload of time when you're doing this. Sounds like they have called the cops on you, Matt. Can you hear that? I can. Oh. Alright. So also, if you, uh, just like the car or the player, you can erase walls that you don't like. Um, now, if you can see that little black dot right there, uh, for some reason, when you drag them upwards, it creates black dots. When you drag them downwards, the ugly black dots are not there. Same with horizontally. You drag them this direction, no black dots. Drag them that direction, black dots. Nobody yeah, so, likes black dots. Yeah, so again, if you do it from bottom up, you're going to get um, what they call door, what am I notches. Uh, wall, wall, wall notches. And if you do them, when you're doing horizontally, do from right to left, again, like you said, you'll get the wall notches. Yeah, so and it's just like... Here's on. our little room. And now, so we don't just have the void floating in it. We're going to want to just select a floor. Uh, so to choose the different types of floors, you want to check these boxes. And so you have things like wood planks, rugs, tiles, bathroom, stairs, uh, asphalt train, which is like subway stations and rails, outdoor, litter, and edges. Litter and edges are different. They do not take up a space um, that the rest of them do. They layer on top. And to make a nice level, you're going to want to take advantage of these, and I'll show you. So uh, let's choose let's choose a nice purple. Click it, and you drag it, and there you have the floor. If you want to get rid of something, you can erase it. Also, if you have a ton, and that's tedious to uh, hold right mouse button and erase all of it, if you want to get all rid of it, you just click one of these void spaces here. It's all gone. Um, when you mod, this might come bite you in the butt to do it that way but currently we're not gonna have an issue with that yeah so. with all the tiles that are listed too you're obviously not gonna use everything like there's obviously stuff in like the floor um sub tab that i've never even touched because like you just have colors that are just like a bright ass yellow oh, and yeah. you're just not about to like there's some it. terrible ones or just like almost black but not quite like i don't understand the point of these anyways mm -hmm. so we have our floors now uh, to go back to the other walls, so here we have windows, the same concept, if you've ever played Hotline Miami, you know what a window is, and you hate them. Uh, doors as well. Now the doors have a bunch of different functions. Uh, if you don't click any of these boxes here, when you have doors selected, which are these brown uh, rectangles right here, uh, then it'll just a regular door acts just like it. Locked, you can't go through it, it will never open or close. Duh. Then if you choose cutscene it will remain locked until you kill everybody in the level so let's put that one right here let's put the locked one on the other side and then mirror is the special one mirror is the will flip the, the way the door opens so you can have fun double doors and I really hope I placed this correctly I can never remember now We'll go over this in level design better, but here's edges, and they're, um, they'll they look like this. Just, you know, an edge, and it goes over the other layer. It looks really nice when you put them under doors. So, a little bit of the floor isn't coming out. And you can wheel through the mouse to choose similar ones much faster. Yeah, I know at least with the... If we look at the bottom, like, the first top half is going to be ones that are associated with rugs. And they have a generally good variation, but some of them, like, there's, like, at least four of them that are just black, it looks like, which I don't think are that helpful. But the most common one I use with the edges themselves is, like, the top right, and it's, like, a brownish one. And I find that with most levels I've made that it's helpful. But, again, when you're using them, there's both uh, with the horizontal and vertical um edge placements you kind of get a, a feel for how it's going to like set in the door itself in your doorways but yeah so before you ask me this question no you cannot zoom in the editor it sucks it's annoying yeah uh you can't like eventually get used to it and then once you actually hit play obviously you'll be a lot closer to the map so you'll be able to see it better yeah and most of it is really just like editing and editing and how uh, like rob just said when you're going to be actually in game playing it that's kind of your time where you're going to be really inspecting your levels and especially when we talk about objects 
where some of them kind of like set in walls differently if they're against something and of course it's just a lot easier when you do in game just to check on things and how they look mm -hmm. So Did you want to touch um, with the exterior doors? I think it was just a brief discussion of um, typically in the first game, how you like um, like a map that we have right now. Those the wall that is parallel to the hammer is going to have one strip of like red wall, and that just is claiming that that is basically the exterior, yeah, and that's the rest is almost this thing. It's the little green and uh, red arrow, and you click on it where you want to put a door and they will not be able to leave. I don't really like this in my levels, but uh, the act, the campaigns of Hotline Miami, like once you go through the door, you can't go back out for uh, balance reasons. So you can add that too. Uh, you can get creative with them too, but the basic use is for putting it at the starting door like this. And uh, so like, I think I have it in the right I don't use these, so I hope yeah, this is correct. Yeah, I think I, I like to allow my player to like, if you kind of get rushed in the beginning, you can kind of like back out and sort of like, the mm -hmm. enemies but yeah i, I just I'm... think it's unrealistic like why the heck can't i le go out this open door mm -hmm. but I, some people like them and it, it is holly Mammy. and so other walls we have nasty green sewer walls we have red brick walls they're usually the ones that you use for the ex exterior whereas the yep. white ones go on the interior so let's fix this right now and yeah you can just like click and drag over what you had whoops We have these wooden plank walls. We have regular wood walls. We have subway walls. And the most fun, stair railings, which there's four different types depending on which side the poles or whatever you want to call them are. And I typically make them pointing in towards the stairs. It's up to you. Yeah, I know um, some people put them out. I personally, I put them out, but honestly, it does not matter. And if people berate you over it, it's like, it's so insignificant. So I, it really is up to you. So. Yep. Another uh, fun little experience, uh, trick you have is these three boxes up here. I should have covered this way earlier. Um, you click the first one, and whatever wall you have highlighted, let's go back to the whites. Um, and whatever carpet you have, if you tr click and drag, it just makes it instantly. I highly recommend you never use this function, ever. It's useless, and you make ugly levels with it. But mm -hmm. it's there. Uh, the much more useful sampling tool, if you ever used MS Paint, you know what it is. You uh, click it, you click what you want to sample, and then you have that. And then the fill option, also like MS Paint, you fill a room with whatever color. Uh, it's got a fun glitch sometimes that'll fill up like a space up here. It's really not yeah. a big deal. You understand be, the concept of it. Yeah, be very careful with the fill tool, though, because I've had times where I'm making something, I actually like have it selected, I don't realize it, and again, I just get a bright-ass purple on an entire floor, so <laughs> that's fun. Uh, you can turn the grid off and on. The grid helps with measurements. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. <coughs> Matt, mm -hmm. I keep it on, and it's... Uh, because I'm just used to it at this point, but yeah, it's a good, it's if a good you like it or not, like... yeah, it's up to you, man. Uh, so, now we've covered all the, the uh, build sections, let's go to items. And we have all of these items, just how many items do you think there are? Just hundreds? Uh, probably like a hundred thousand. Uh, ten thousand. <laughs> hundred thousand. Uh, there is a lot of op options, and they're like... They're, they only have one descriptor, and they're exactly like this. There's no spaces in them. Um, basically, Denaton just used whatever code they had, and that's what you have to deal with. So eventually, you'll know what's you'll know pretty much everything. Uh, you'll know the names. Just if you're like, oh, I'd like to have I have a kitchen that I need filling in. Let's type in kitchen, mm -hmm. and you'll get some kitchen stuff, but not everything. Uh, yeah, you'll get some you'll get some weird ones. I think the most interesting one is uh, like, hey. What about those beach umbrellas I've seen? They're under par parasol, parasail, and it just kind of odd stuff like that. And again, it's just yeah. you just have to deal with it. But once you find it, you'll not really forget about it. Yeah, I, it, it, I, I mean, this is just one of those experience things uh, to to know like just what's in the editor. Just you know, uh, it, if you don't know what to put in your level at that time, 
I would say just like scroll through everything and just I mean I think it's the best way to find something so yeah uh, well, what do we want in our first room let's put a nice uh, couch if I could spell it right couch and let's put it here and then uh, how about a table so I type in table and let's get a small table that'll work yeah, and there really is so much in the furniture list. Like, at least now, at least pretty recently, I've been using the editor for about, I'd say, like, 10 months to a year. And I, like, realized that luggage is, like, within it. I think they're in Stronghold, that um, main beard level. So, again, just stuff like that, like, I didn't even realize was in there. Oh, yeah. So, and, uh, so if... I'll, and a lot of items, you'll see there's a bunch of different versions. Thank you for saying luggage, because that's a good example. So if I turn the mouse wheel up or down, it'll scroll through all the options. Or you can just click, but I don't know why you would ever do that when you just have the scroll wheel. Yeah, and, scroll wheel's your go-to. Yeah, and so, like, any, like, you see this has only one item. That means this is the only version of 50 Blessings table. But with the new, uh, with, the, like, the ATM, you have busted open, sort of busted open, and nice and closed and to your uh, here's here's the acid baths there's a whole bunch now certain uh, items will have animations and you can scroll through all of them but when you place it like it'll uh, go through its behavior so like this acid bath bubbles and I would suggest never using the acid bath yeah, and once we get to spriting and stuff, like you said, with object behaviors, it's something that does affect uh, modding, but of course that's for another... Yep, yep. Also, so you're like, hey, these, these are all cool, but what if I want to place a civilian or something? Well, then you over here, you check people, and now you have all the sprites of pretty much everybody. Now there's some cool glitches that when you, uh, so say I want, uh, say I want like a character with an animation, for instance, like attack knife, it's pretty much up in the air which animation is actually going to be there. Here, um, but with people, if you do, if you don't want them to stand fully still, you can change the speed of the animation. So if you want him just to stand here, now he doesn't count as an enemy; he's just a sprite. The enemy tab yeah. is right here, but uh, most people have animations with speeds. I, there's not a whole lot of point to most of these. Yeah, I mean, it's really just spam, like when you see the um, ship those campaigns that people just put the speed all the yeah, way up. Yeah, like, see, here's all the like... versions of here's all the versions of Jake dead. Like, it doesn't need an animation speed, but you can scroll through the different ones, and it'll choose one at random for you to have. Like, it, I doubt it's going to be this one. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you three versions of dead Jake, and it'll all be the same once I hit play. Um, but that's how you do items and people pretty simple oh and I if you if you want to have it an angle hold shift and scroll the mouse wheel to uh, spin it or hold shift and hit right mouse button to do 90 degree turns so you yeah. don't have everything at one angle so rotating scroll. yeah rotating objects that need to be rotated is a must like and more so like a couch is fine if it's like parallel against whatever wall it's at but when we get to stuff um with like boxes, what Rob was just saying with the scroll wheel. Again, there's so many variations of boxes, and again, it, it makes it sound like it's a bigger deal than it is, but with that, it's not that. After a while, if you're putting down the same box in your level, people are gonna be like, all right, there's something going on here. All right, next, I think we covered all of items. Pretty much anything important. Uh, next, we'll have enemy and you can use these arrows to click through all of the available enemies that your character has. Hammer has everything but soldiers, so you see all of them but side soldiers. Uh, there's a glitch to get them to have soldiers, but we're not going to cover that right now. So let's do Mafia, and you'll have all the different ones. You'll have their different behaviors. So there's two types of behavior for melee and three types of behaviors for guns. Static, which means he doesn't move at all. Patrol, which means, and it, it describes what it does right here. Uh, it turns 90 degrees left when the path is blocked. So he will turn here, uh, go here, go here, go here. I'm going to move that item. So, yeah. yeah. All the patrols, and including the fat enemies, do the same behavior like you just said with the uh, turn 90 degrees left when path is blocked, as you can read. Yeah. And I'm going to rearrange. 
finish the furniture so he actually can like walk this direction and you can get creative with the items to give him a Pacific uh, patrol uh, fats yeah, uh, you should know what these are you should know what the character types are idle is a bit strange uh, uh, I'm not sure how much they come up in the campaign but there's three different idle animations for like say the mafia and he will either spawn with these two will spawn with gun once they see you and they, they they behave just like static enemies essentially they'll pull out a gun it's random though it's not like how static enemies are where you can you have to choose what kind of gun they have and then that's the gun they'll have it's not like how yeah. Mammy one I was gonna say with the, the phone idle guy I'm almost positive that when he sees a player he takes out a silence pistol with the smoking oh, yeah. animation it's kind of random what he kind of mm -hmm. shoots you with and you have, for these you have pipe knife bat this is pretty simple stuff folks uh miscellaneous why they called it miscellaneous i have no idea it's weapons it should have been called weapons uh yeah, but you know it, you spawn in weapons the blacked out ones you can't use because that character doesn't have the sprites for it so i'm gonna give hammer a pistol and this assault rifle and they'll just float there as if they're regular weapons uh enemies who can't use these weapons like the mafia will never pick that thing up and then we're back to level which we've already put down hammer in the vehicle because otherwise we can't save which i'm going to do that right now which is file save or control s just like every other windows program uh these it's a bit uh it's a bit glitchy, the uh, the hours, the minutes, the days, you'll never see that. The only thing that comes up will be what state is it, it in, so we're going to say Texas, and it will say Texas only in campaign. When I hit play right now, you'll not see the word Texas. Yeah, and we'll go over that, the uh, layouts of like what um, distinguishes a single level from a campaign. But yeah, yeah, uh, like... Put it simply, Denaton has abandoned the editor. All the mistakes, like this, these minor little things, they're never going to fix. You just have to work around it by putting your, the entire address in the state bar here. Uh, you can change the S-Rank score, and the, the S-Rank score will affect like all the lower grades below it. But So this is the max score that you have to get, and no one really gives a shit about these anymore um, in yeah. editor. But it's probably good to put some number in so it's not just zero it just looks nicer on the score screen and then of course level title you can if you don't like what you originally called it you can change that so instead of editor one we're going to call it editor zero and it, it would change also so you can speak, change your author yeah gosh so i was going to say um with changes being made in the top right with the grid section and the wall guide that says level settings if at all that you're making a level and you want to change your player character there is a possibility that I think it does delete your enemies. Is that correct? So if you go to options, if you've made a mistake and you choose level settings, uh, you can do that. It'll warn you that you'll lose your enemy placement if you ch only if you change to a character who can't use in, uh, the enemies that you have set. So I go to henchman. He only has gang, so we would lose those if we choose them. We can change the song, change the title, and that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, that's so, a good point. Say I change Say I change to the rat. Let's go to the rat and I hit OK. Uh, we'll lose hammer and we'll lose this little thing, but we can put him here. And we can put his little bus stop and see the enemies didn't leave because we didn't choose that. Yeah. Okay. We're just gonna say I'm gonna pack this in right now. Yeah, um please donate to Matt. He's trying to get out of Syria right now. <laughs> No, no, no. So, yeah, again, I, you can leave this in that. I do apologize for the background noise on my part. Of course, it's the um, day before the 4th of July, so I see everyone going crazy with fireworks. Anyways, once you have a masterful level right here, you could create a new floor. So, Control alt f or clicking New Floor under the Level tab in the toolbar. And it will create this. And, oh, I, I forgot. So... And you're like, oh crap, well, where is everything? How do I know? You click show wall guide, and this is what the bottom floor looked like. This will help you line everything up. So, he's going to come from the stairs here, so we're going to want to continue the stairs there. And this looks absolutely horrid. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that'll look good. 
and then he'll have uh, and it's not a huge deal if the two floors don't match up with each other I don't think most people are paying attention but it's nice to know exactly like where he comes up the stairs yeah uh, just basically yeah trace your previous kind of floor and obviously I would like leave that said, setting on at all times mm -hmm. just use your best judgment to line it up and how you think the next transition can look so we have the second floor and we have breakable walls here. I forgot to cover those. Shoot them with a shotgun, they break. Otherwise, you're not going to get through them. Uh, you'll be able to figure it out. Anyway. So, once you've completed this floor and you want to link them, uh, you c what I just did there is I held shift and control at the same time in the right and left arrow key to uh, shoot back and forth through them. So, once you want them to go, you go floor transition. And just like any object, you can change the direction. You can't make it go uh, anything but 90 degrees, but it's the same concept. And you will click and drag where you want it to go. So click and drag in the direction that you want him to go. So he has to be walking that direction for the floor transition to go. And these sliders will allow you to put, like, that's what he'll spawn on that level. So he won't. If you don't move it, he'll uh, right where he walks. That's where he'll appear on the next floor. But if you slide the X and Y axis, he'll appear someplace different. So we want him a little bit further up the stairs. So we'll put him right here. If I can get it, there we go. And the more floors you have, the more check boxes you'll have. I can't check first, obviously, because it's already on the first. Uh, but that uh, it's pretty simple. That's how that yeah, works. Yeah, just get a feel for it, and you'll kind of. See how it is, and if you make mistakes, especially like you said, when you have multiple floors, just go in and adjust it. But yeah, right. and then make sure to create one to go back, or you can't leave the level. They only work one way, so you have to make two to go one to go up and one to go down, right? And make sure too that you're not overlapping, like he's doing, kind of pushing him more away from the bottom staircase of the first floor. So again, like when he enters from the second floor to the first floor, he's not going to hit that level transition again and it's gonna bring him back up. Also, if you don't like stairs, you can do elevators. Elevators act pretty much just like floor transitions and uh, wherever you put them, the person's going to rise at that spot and he'll, they'll show up right there. Now we have a beautiful level, you're happy with it, you want to test it, you want to see if it plays well. You uh, go to file I would recommend saving it option often because you never know when you're going to get a crash. But you're going to go. Oh, by the way, uh, my jakes are all lined up together correctly now. Yeah. Uh, and play level or control P. Control P is faster. So it'll give you the basic uh, loading screen unless you change it. You can only change it with campaigns. And here you go. You start up the level. Oh, yeah, I can't go backwards. I set that. Alright, so we cleared this floor. So now, we can't go through this one because I locked it. This one can now open because we cleared everyone on the floor. And these are, oh yeah, I correctly did this. And here's the mirrored ones. So, go here. Boom. Alright, now your level plays amazingly. You walk down. You go to your car. I placed that so wrong. It'll spit you back to here and you can edit that or you can publish it we'll cover publishing in another video I hope that this like 30 minute fiasco uh, was a help for you our kind of closing we'll talk about just special effects which Rob is gonna show you at the top it's under the level file and here we've already done new floor previous floor uh, create cutscene will be in a different video so the first one is add rain, which instantly adds it to the entire map. And to get rain out of your indoor areas, you click and drag. So you can click and drag from like any direction. And just make sure it's lined up. And when you're happy with it, you right click and you'll be out of that menu. If you're unhappy with it, you're going to have to restart from scratch because uh, it's just poorly designed. Uh, the other thing is daylight, which you can't change. Everything's just brightly lit now and you can remove it by clicking the same button same with 
daylight. Gonna move that. And the other thing is darkness. Which, just like the rain, you click and drag, and now that room is dark. And you can uh, multiply the effect even worse. So just you have layer darkness. It. Yeah, just layer it. And, I mean, it takes processing power. But you have it now. If you're unhappy with the way you did darkness, you're gonna have to hit Control Alt D and hit it again to open up the tab again. You're gonna have to just restart. Yeah, and that's why it is tedious. What's different about the rain and the darkness effect is that the rain you start out and the entire area is covered, and where you're basically is highlighting areas, of course, like the interior that you're not gonna let or just not have rain there. But unfortunately, with darkness. Um, which kind of makes sense that, again, you're just specifically highlighting. It's not the entire area you're starting out with. It's just specific um, rooms that you're going to be using that for, like he just did with the, the fat guy in the top right. All right. But, uh, uh, what else is there? Um, I I sunset, we... which is similar to uh, brightness or daylight. It's pretty much the same thing. I'm not sure exactly what it changes. Do you know what it changes, Matt? Um, with sunlight? Uh, add daylight or add sunset. I think um, sunset is the one that's, there's one of them that's like kind of overbearing. I know obviously it's using like um, stronghold. Um, oh yeah, I think it's just the variation of how intense the brightness is. Yeah, and some of them, I again, I can't really recall which one it is, but one of them is kind of overbearing and typically yeah like it's rare that people will use them but it might give a good kind of effect to a level depending on the scenery like you might have a like resort type place uh also another option is change background and this is the basic one pink cyan or there's dark brown which i think will also add thunder noises yes the yeah. the brown yeah i think yeah, brown does that. The red one is just a default red. Red but, yeah. is just default. Uh, jungle day will add trees, and that uh, evening and night, uh, it'll just add, change like the shade of the tree. And then ocean waves, like uh, dead ahead, will be ocean waves. You can't see it until you hit OK, and then it looks like that. I think the best one, if we have rain, is going to be dark brown. Uh, these don't show up in campaign, but in single levels, it really helps uh, set the mood if you want a certain mood you're saying. Also, level borders. It's another click and drag sort of deal. And it's one of those kind of useless scenarios, unfortunately. But uh, when we get to Notepad++, they're super important. Yeah, but until then, I wouldn't worry about that. Really yeah, and I was going to say, too, with um, the build tab and the first tab on the uh, far right, going with level borders and the same thing, there's a, a um, little red cube. And it's oh, yeah, we forgot to cover this. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. invisible walls. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't see them when you're actually playing the game, but you sure can't go through them. Yeah, and I think there's sometimes glitches where enemies will kind of go through them, but for this example, we might kind of border Richter so he's like the player's not able to kind of go around the whole building and just kind of contain him there but make sure of course uh, he, he can access the car or in his right. case the bus stops you're not like straining him. They're contextual mm -hmm. and I'm gonna flip that bus seat because it was bothering me okay but in terms of I think you? we did yeah yeah in terms of Closing words, I was going to say, um, how many floors is too little or too much? Um, now, realistically, I mean, of course, the game's not realistic, but if you're making a house, like just a normal house level, like this is decent, it's not really going to have six floors. And I think typical for that is going to be like three to four. And when we kind of get to level development, um, you have issues where like levels kind of seem to drag on or like they're too short but of course kind of using your best judgment um, when they get making these settings but of course like I've said um, we'll touch base with this in our next video but I think closing words best advice overall and 
everyone agrees on this is experience and mm -hmm. you definitely just play around with the editor like i know when i first started i was just messing with it for like a month or so and um just trial and error and yeah, don't make be garbage don't worry just keep uh making that garbage better and better and eventually you're gonna have nice levels yeah, yeah, and like, don't be intimidated. It's like, obviously, you're just making whatever, but of course, just take your time with making your content. And of course, we hope yeah, that. Don't do this. This is bad. This is, yeah. bad. This, this is just for the basics. Next, ep next episode, I think we're going to make it uh, look nicer. Yeah, we'll touch the one of the episodes bit, at least. But, uh, yeah, I think that's what I need to say. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, stay tuned.